Hello, Synops here, and um, I'm going to carry on with the story, so let's read the same book. I'm sorry, Ezio. I just want us to get to the Medicina as soon as we can. And indeed, it wasn't fair, but Ezio was trying, but tired by the minute. Or, was tiring by the minute. Finally, they reached a shadowy room, fest festooned with mysteries or mysterious instruments and files of brass and glass ranged along dark oak tables hanging from the ceiling along with clusters of dried herbs where their family doctor and his surgery it was all Ezio could do to remain on his feet Dottori God. Serious. Uh, not the best pleased at the roused in the middle of the night, but his but his manner changed to one of the concern as soon as he brought had brought a candle close to inspect Dencio's wound. Hmm. He said gravely. You may. You made quite a mess of yourself this time, young man. You can't, oh, well, can't you people think of anything better to do than go around beating each other up? It, it was a question of honor, good doctor. Um, put in Federico. I see, said the doctor evenly. It's nothing, really, said Ezio, though he <laughs> felt faint. Federico was usually was usual hiding concern behind humor. Said, "Do patch him up as best as you can, friend. That pretty little face of his is his only asset." Hey, Fortinita, Ezio hit back, giving his brother the finger. The doctor ignored them, washed his hands, probed the wound gently, and poured some clear fluids from one of his many bottles on to a piece of linen and dabbed it <laughs> and dabbed the wound with this and stung it stung so much that Ezio almost sprang from his chair his face screwed up with the pain so then the pain then so then satisfied that the wound would or the wound was clean, the doctor took a needle and threads with fine cat gut. Now now he said this will really hurt a little. Once the stitches were in the wound bandaged so that Ezio looked like a turban tuck. The doctor smiled and cursed that will be three flooring. I can't say the currency of this area. For now, I'll come to your plaza, Planasia, for a few days and remove the stitches. That'll be. That'll be another three for me to pay for them. You'll have a terrible headache, but it will pass. Just a word to rest. If it's in your nature and don't worry the wound looks worse than it is and there is there's even a bonus there shouldn't be a, shouldn't be much of a scar so you won't be disappointing the ladies too greatly in the future once they were back in the street Federico put his arm around his younger brother he pulled out a flask and offered it to Ezio. Don't worry, he said, noticing the expression on Ezio's face. It's our father's great, or our father's best grandpa. Better than mother's milk for a man in your condition. They both drank, or both drank, feeling the f um, fiery liquid warm them. Quite a night, he, uh, said Frederico. Indeed. I only wish um sorry indeed i only wish they were all as fun as but Ezio interrupted himself 
he saw that his brother was beginning to grin from ear to ear. Oh, wait. He he can correct himself and laughed. They are. Even so, I think. <laughs> Even so, I think a little food and drink won't be a bad thing to set you up before we go home. It's late. I know. But there's a taverna nearby where they don't close until breakfast time. And you, you and the Osi are Amike uh, in uh, Tami? How do you, how did you guess? An hour ago, or an hour or later, after a meal of, of rib, ribble, rib, ribble, and biscuite washed down with a bottle of, um, Bernilo, Ezio felt as if he would never well, as he never been wounded at all. He was young and fit. He felt that all his lost energy had flown back into him. The adrenaline of the victory over the Patsy mob certainly contributed to the swiftness of his recovery. Time to go home. Time to go home, little brother, said Rico. Father's sure gonna wonder how I got... how... Father's so sure gonna wonder where we are, and you're the one who, the one he looks to with, to help him with the blank or with the bank. Luckily for me, I've I've got I've no head for figures, which is why I suppose I can't wait to get into politics. Politics or the circus, the way you carry on. What's the difference? Ezio and Ezio knew that um, Federico bore him no ill ill will or over the fact that their father confided more in of the family business in him than in his elder brother. Federico would die of boredom if confronted by a life of banking. He the problem was Ezio had a feeling that he might do the same. He might be the same, sorry. But for the moment, the days when he don donned the black velvet suit and the gold chain of the Florence Florentine banker was still what still some way off, and he was determined to enjoy his days of freedom and responsibility responsibility to the full. Little did he realize how short-lived those days would be. We'd better hurry too, Frenrico said. If if we're avoid if we're want to avoid the bollocking. He may be worried. No he knows we can take care of ourselves. Frenrico was looking at Ezio Spur particularly so, but we had better get on the move he paused you don't feel up to a little wager do you a race perhaps where to let's say Federico looked across the moonlight city towards the tower not towards the tower not far away the roof of Santantia If it's not going to make much out of you and it's far not or it's not far from home but there is just one more thing. Yes? We're not racing along the streets, but across the rooftops. Ezio took a deep breath. Okay, try me. He said, All right, little Tartaringa, go. 
Without another word, Fantico was off, sealing a nearby rough cast wall and easily, um, well, as easy as a lizard would. He paused at the top, seeming, or seeming almost to, to, to tiger among the round, rounded red tiles, laughed, and was off again. By the time Ezio had reached the rooftops, his brother was 20 yards ahead and set off in pursuit, his pain forgotten in the adrenaline fueled excitement of the chase. Then he saw Federico take a almighty leap across the, a pitch black void to land lightly on the flat roof of the grey uh, plasma. Slightly below the level of the one he had just jumped from. Uh, he ran a little further away and it waited. Ezio felt a glimmer of fear as he chased. As the chase of the street. As the chasm of the street. Eight doorways below. Loomed before him. But he only... Or he, but he know, knew, sorry, but he knew that he would rather die than be than hesitate in front of his brother. And so, summoning up his courage, he took a massive leap of faith, seeing as he soared across the hard granite cobbles in the moon, light far beneath his feet, they fa flailed the air. For a split second, he wondered if he was, if he judged it right, as the hard grey wall of the plasma seemed to rise up and meet him. But then somehow it sunk below him, and he was on the new rooftop, sprawling slightly. It was true, but still on his feet, and he elated, though breathing hard. Baby brother still has much to learn, taunted Fred Rico, setting off again and darting shadow among the chimney stacks. Under the scattering of the clouds, Ezio hurled himself forward, lost in the wilderness of the moment. Other other abysses yawned beneath him, and uh, other abysses yawned beneath him. Some defining mere alleyways, mere alleyways, are those broad thought fairs, uh, uh, thought fair. Federico was nowhere to be seen, suddenly the tower of Santantiago rose before him, right, rose before him, rising from the red steep of the church, gently east Austin roof, but as he approached, he remembered that the church stood in the center of a square, and that the distance between the roof and those of the surrounding buildings was far greater than any he had left.